this week on The Travel Show, I'm in the Philippines. <laughs> Finding out how the island of Shiagao is bouncing back after being hit by a super typhoon. We went through the worst in our lives and we, you know, we gotta help each other bounce back. Okay, so this leg down, this leg up. Oh my God, are you serious? <laughs> Striking a pose for the human drones. And I'm journeying into the realm of the stingless jellyfish. Humans are not part of their diet, so you're fine. <laughs> This week, I'm in the Philippines on the island of Shiagao, some 700 kilometers southeast of the country's capital, Manila. Named after a native mangrove, the island became famous for its surfing scene, considered the best in the Philippines. But the main draw for many is Shiagao's largely unspoilt natural environment. And when you're zipping around on a bike, it's easy to see how stunning this place is. In 2019, Shiagao was voted the best island in Asia and was dubbed the next Bali, with plans for further development on the horizon. In December 2021, everything changed. Category 5 Super Typhoon Odette hit the island off guard with wind speeds of up to 195 kilometers an hour. These winds caused huge amounts of damage, while storm surges flooded coastal areas. So it's been little over a year since Super Typhoon Odette hit this island, but you can still see the scars. It's been a tough time for the islanders, who are so heavily reliant on tourism. Visitor numbers have almost halved since 2019, following the double whammy of a global pandemic and the typhoon. But the industry is slowly recovering and developing new and resilient tourism strategies. This farm offers visitors the chance to learn how the island is evolving. Shiagao relies heavily on food imports so wants to grow more of its own crops. And tourists who want to try something away from the beaches get to join in. The tour company that we've created is called uh, Local Experience, so it's all about experiencing the local livelihoods mm -hmm. and the local ways of life. And I think part of it that they really enjoy is that they really get to interact with the locals and people like our farmers who spearhead the tours, mm -hmm. hear their stories, hear about their lives. We will do said swimming. Okay. So the... Annalyn is originally from Shiagao and returned home 10 years ago after working as a nurse in Manila. Yeah. You need to put one, only one seed per... Okay. And what was it like here during Typhoon Odette? There's something like two stages, because at, on the first stage, we, um, there's wind and heavy rain, so I was just uh, smiling, ah, this is normal. Because here in the island, it's normal that every December, every rainy season, it's something like typhoon every yeah. day. Tropical storm. Yeah. Then there's one, two, three, four successive. Something like 
30 minutes of one, two, three, bang! Wow. I was just there and then did this, the all. The roof of the house is all gone and then I'm so, I'm so really weird at that time. Wow, but you've rebuilt. Yeah, still when it rains hard, so, uh, there's typhoon again. So yeah. that was my really, really very traumatic experience. Yes. In some ways, life after Odette was the worst part. The island was completely cut off and supplies ran out fast. So were you here during Odette, Typhoon Odette? I was Odette. here during Odette. Uh, probably the worst experience of my life. There wasn't any power, there wasn't any water. And so for the first few weeks, we were just eating whatever was left over in our fridges. Uh, hopefully, I mean, hoping that it wouldn't spoil. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, I realized that the fishermen weren't going out to sea because there wasn't any fresh produce in the markets. Fishing communities were severely affected with many fishing boats damaged or destroyed during the typhoon. David decided to help. The best way to do it was to help prepare fishing boats so we can get them out in the water right away. So that's what we did. I used SEV as like a platform to raise money. Yeah, I was planning maybe 30 boats. We ended up uh, helping maybe 360 boats. Oh, great. And do you think that's um, created more of a bond for you guys? I would think so, yeah. I mean, a lot of the fishermen that we've helped before, we still you know, we get fish from them now and we know them more now because we went through the worst in our lives and we, you know, we kind of helped each other bounce back. The Philippines is made up of over 7,000 islands surrounded by seas that are heating up. And this, scientists say, puts the nation at a greater risk from climate change. Super Typhoon Odette sadly claimed around 20 lives in Shiagao. Though many believe if it wasn't for the mangroves that cover 50% of the island's coastline, more lives could have been lost. Oh, it's vitally important. It's the heartbeat of the island. Without the mangroves, there would we, the island would be um, exposed to natural disasters like typhoons and tsunamis and storm surges, which is a regular occurrence in the Philippines. This February, the Philippines government recognized Shiagao's mangrove forest of Del Carmen as a wetland of international importance. This is good news when you consider in bygone decades, mangroves were ripped up for firewood and building materials. When we came out after the day after Odette, you could clearly see that all the leaves of the mangroves were gone. It was bare. It was like a nude mangrove. But the roots and the trunks were all intact. Uh, you could really tell that the, those communities were much more protected than those communities that were exposed on the coastline. Those were completely 100% demolished. But those communities that lived uh, be behind the mangroves had much less damage. The island might always be in the firing line of extreme weather events. But people here are harnessing the benefits of their natural environment as they seek to deal with the impacts. And if you're thinking of coming to the Philippines anytime soon, here are some of the travel show's top tips. Shiagao's main surfing spot, Cloud9, is not for the faint-hearted. With thick tube waves breaking over razor-sharp corals, some pro surfers call it a death ride. But if surfing isn't your thing, there's plenty of other activities you can do in the water here. You can take a boat trip through the mangroves to end up at Subba Lagoon. It looks like a tropical paradise you would see on a postcard. 
Well, if your idea of paradise is throwing yourself off a 12-foot diving board. Further afield from the shores of Shiagao is the island of Bohol, the home of the Tarsiers. These little animals have been around for 45 million years, but are now almost extinct. Beware, they're so sensitive that even a camera flash or a touch of a human can severely hurt or even kill them. So they're best to be looked at from a distance, guided by the volunteers. Luzon, the largest island in the Philippines, is home to the Banyue rice terraces. This UNESCO World Heritage Site was carved into the mountainside over 2,000 years ago using traditional hand tools and techniques. Visitors can hike or take guided tours to explore the terraces and learn more about the indigenous people who built them. Still to come on The Travel Show. They're half man and half drone. This arm here. Oh, I see. <laughs> I find out if the human drones are the next social media sensation and taking a dip with the stingless jellyfish. This jellyfish sanctuary has millions upon millions of jellyfish. So don't go away. This is Mountain View, one of the most sought after photo spots in Shiagao, and also home to the human drone. Wearing sports-style jerseys with their names emblazoned on the back, these guys use their best moves to mimic those of a state-of-the-art drone for tourist social media accounts. All whilst trying to avoid oncoming traffic. And the results have gone viral. Originally, they would come here to sell bamboo straws to tourists, but recently they discovered that visitors preferred to part with their cash for stylized social media content. Kumbaga, ginawa namin na para yung mga turista mag-enjoy na bumalik-balik dito. Yung subukan namin sa mga sama namin hanggang sa ano, ginawa namin hanap buhay rin pang dagdag kita sa pagbibinda ng bamboo straw. Now it was my turn to become a viral superstar. Right, I've got to get my moves down. This arm here. Oh, I see. <laughs> One more. Okay, for treat another push. Another. Oh, okay, so this leg down, this leg up. Oh my God. Are you serious? anything like this before, but in this social media mad world, I think it's an absolutely brilliant idea. <laughs> that looks really cool. I'll leave it to you to decide what looks better, man or drone. I've left Shiagao to visit Sohoton Cove National Park on the island of Bucas Grande, which I'm told is one of the few places on Earth you'll find a certain, rather slimy creature that's not normally that popular. Jellyfish are amazing creatures. They're tough and have been around for eons, but with their foreboding tentacles equipped with venomous stings, it's no surprise they aren't many people's favourite animal. I haven't 
travel two hours by boat just to do some sightseeing, so Ho Tong Cove is the realm of the stingless jellyfish. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Joining me on the adventure to the jellyfish sanctuary is Christelle. She's a student who's been studying these specific species at university. But this will be the first time she sees them in the flesh. Well, the jelly. But getting there won't be easy. We're having to take a bonka, a traditional boat in the Philippines that's narrow enough for gaps like these. On the way to the jellyfish sanctuary, we stop off at the luminescent cave that's popular with tourists. But the only way to get access is underwater. What the experience, it was really frightening not seeing where you were going. But once you're in here, it's just such an uh, amazing experience we really, this stalactites and the water it's an amazing color i was expecting it to be completely dark but the rock formations bounce light off the sand to create a kaleidoscope of colors okay so we're walking through the next cave here to be claustrophobic There's only one way down. <laughs> Time to head to the main attraction. Just past this small opening is the jellyfish sanctuary. Do you think we'll fit? <laughs> it's so small. The sanctuary is otherworldly. Huge rocks and dense jungle punch up into the sky. Gosh, these stingless jellyfish, they look like little mushrooms. Could you eat them? <laughs> no. The water's so clear. So, Carmen, are you ready to go and swim with the jelly? Yeah, that's great. Do it. Wow, I can't believe I'm going to swim with jelly. <laughs> so is there a good way to hold them? Am I holding it correctly? The most comfortable way, I guess, would be to hold them bell down, because those tentacle ones are the tiny, tiny stingers. Oh, these ones have tiny stings. Mm -hmm. But it won't hurt me. It won't hurt you. I don't feel any pain. He's just a little bit slimy. So why won't he hurt me if he's got stingers? The stingers are reserved for their prey, mostly microorganisms and zooplankton that they need to eat. But humans are not part of their diet, so you're fine. <laughs> okay. This may look like a lot of jellyfish, but from April, you won't be able to move for them once their breeding season begins. So why do they like being in this part of the cove? 
the tides are very strong outside. So this acts as their sanctuary that keeps them safe from predators, from strong currents that can carry them elsewhere. Wow. So they're protected by the rocks and the, the mm -hmm. small entrance. And the small entrance and the sandbar. These jellyfish are resilient, but there are concerns that tourist activities could cause problems. Tourist bodies here want visitors to be more mindful when they visit. Well, the Department of Tourism has said that this cove specifically, this jellyfish sanctuary, has millions upon millions of jellyfish and they do not compare to the amount of tourists that come here. So as long as you try to practice ethical and sustainable ecotourism, it would be good, especially listening to our boatmen and just following all of the regulations set in place. They say to avoid polluting their home with any rubbish and wear reef-safe sunscreen to protect the ecosystem. Also, to treat the jellyfish with respect, only pick them up with advice from a guide and avoid kicking or bumping into them when swimming. This is an amazing experience and taking how dangerous some of their cousins can be, it probably won't be something I get to do again. But seeing these incredible creatures really shows you just how weird and wonderful nature can be. Well, I'm off to swim with my new friends. That's all we've got time for this week. Coming up next time. Welcome each and every one of you onto my Gadigal people's custodial land. We're at Sydney's enormous month-long World Pride Festival to find out how Indigenous gay and lesbian people are being put front and centre of the celebrations. We tell stories, we pass stories down from generation to generation and that's what we're doing on stage. And you can also catch us on the BBC iPlayer and we're on social media too in all the usual places along with some great travel content from around the BBC. But until then, from all of us here in the Philippines, it's goodbye and see you soon.